know it fact. We as human beings are all already cyborgs. We spend our everyday lives living in close interactivity with our technological devices, our cell phones, computers, and so on. And they help us carry out a variety of tasks, right? From simple things like booking a cab to much more complicated tasks like mediating conversations among humans, helping us express ourselves in different varieties of ways, and nowadays even to find new relationships and find love. Therefore, any advancements in these technological devices is in some sense a direct advancement and evolution of what it means to be human beings in the first place. And in the last four or five years, these advancements have been of a highly profound and significant nature with machine learning and artificial intelligence fundamentally changing how our societies live and function. But one may wonder what role could something like machine learning or AI have in something we consider such an inherently human activity, that of making art and expressing ourselves creatively. To talk about this, um, let me tell you guys about an incident that took place almost three years ago. This was a match that happened between Lee Sedol, the world's best Go player, and AlphaGo, an AI created by Google's DeepMind. So what happens here is uh, the machine, which is the AlphaGo machine, is competing with Lee Sedol in the game of Go, which is an extremely complex game. And to give you a sense of how complex it is, the total number of moves that are possible within the game Go is in the order which is much, much more than the total number of atoms in the universe. And it's a game that requires and relies on on things like intuition and creativity, seemingly sort of subjective, uh, subjective attributes which we do not associate with machines readily. But what happened? So AlphaGo won the series four is to one, and AI had achieved a feat which even many scientists thought was at least a decade away. Well, this may seem a little bit eerie. For me, the key takeaway was what Lee Sedol had to say after the matches. So he said that while playing with AlphaGo, he was able to look at the game of Go from a completely new perspective and the machine pushed him to think in different creative ways that he wouldn't have thought about and come up with moves and strategies which he wouldn't have if he was continuing to just play with other humans. Isn't that beautiful and profound? Machines pushing us to be creative in entirely new ways. So as we design and shape our machines and algorithms, they in turn are constantly designing and shaping us and in some sense, pushing ourselves from our boundaries of inherent creativity to be able to become and explore new forms and universes of creative expression. And that's what I try and do through my own art practice, is to create new experiences and allow and engage people in experiencing new forms of creativity. For example, uh, I worked on creating this art piece called a flying pantograph while I was studying at the MIT Media Lab. What this device does is it essentially is a drone that extends your physical reach to be able to draw and sketch anywhere in space. And that liberates the foundations we have of our physical body to act as this extremely long, almost infinite arm with, with a drawing pen attached at the end of it. So as I make movements on, it, on this stable surface, the drone replicates those movements. And over time, there's a back and forth which happens between me and the drone, or the artist and the drone, where I sort of start responding to the quirkiness of the motions of the drone itself, and we develop a creative relationship over time. With uh, the advent and sort of the advancements of machine learning over the last few years, we move beyond just sort of physical uh, augmentation to have more cognitive augmentation in processes like imagination, perception, and our inherent notion of creativity itself. And what's happened essentially is uh, over the last three, four years, machines have become extremely good at identifying thousands of different kinds of things within images, pretty much building a visual vocabulary or a visual understanding of the world similar to humans. So I was very curious in exploring what that means in terms of a collaborative creative process. So I developed this uh, AI-driven art system called Tandem which looks like a simple drawing tool like, like your paint software, and you create these doodles, uh, for example, this bottle with, with a feather pen dipped in it, but then 
what the machine does is reinterprets these drawings based on what it sees within the human inputs and creates a beautiful filled painting of that. So it interprets the feathers as these birds and the letters as roads that lead to towers. Dynamic back and forth creative expression is so the human drew very simple straight lines but the machine interpreted it as these flowers uh, at the intersections of these lines and created this beautiful filled output of that. This one's also particularly interesting where uh, what most of us would see on the left is, is an input drawing of barren trees in a deserted land, but the machine interprets these as, as dogs with large ears and creates a beautiful landscape around it. So this sort of back and forth between human and machine where the machine allows us to look at our own drawings and our own inputs from a completely different perspective is something that's exciting for me uh, from an AI-human collaborative perspective. There's another kind of algorithm called generative adversarial networks which have become extremely good over the last couple of years specifically in creating high definition, very realistic uh, imagery. So all these faces that you just saw, none of these people actually exist in the real world. These are all machines' imaginations of, of what a human face looks like. And I've been very interested in exploring this algorithm and sort of modifying it in various ways. Uh, not to create hyper-realistic images, but to use that in an artistic capacity. So I created this work called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Algorithm, where I curate a data set of about 60,000 images of human surgical dissections and let the machine create its own landscape of what the insides of the human body look like to it. And it created its own imaginations of the insides of the human body. And this, this work uh, and the title of the work were both inspired by one of Rembrandt's earliest paintings called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr. Tull, which he created at a time of troubled fascination with medical science and medical technology. And people were sort of debating, uh, should we let other humans look while other humans are being cut open and so on, so on and so forth. And in, in a similar sense, we are at a parallel time today, we are sort of debating how much of uh, humans should machines be exposed to and we, are, we have this troubled fascination with teaching machines more and more things but also sort of restricting that so that they don't ultimately take us over, right? Uh, so in that sense I wanted to take that to an extreme level and let the machine get exposed to the hardware of the human body itself and create its own uh, interpretations of that. This piece was exhibited at uh, the Nature Mod Gallery last year in August uh, as part of the Gradient Descent AI Art Show. It was one of the first AI art shows uh, in a mainstream contemporary art gallery, so thereby establishing AI art as a genre of art in its own right, which is very exciting for me. Um, this next piece that I wanted to talk about is called the Masked Reality Series, and it's a piece that I've been working on for a few months. Masks as an object, uh, as a cultural object which has existed across different cultures and across time periods is something that's very interesting and very fascinating for me just because masks have this ability to transform and transcend our identity of self and to take us to completely new vantage points to engage with the world from, right? And uh, in some sense I see a lot of parallel with what these masks were and what technology plays a role in our lives today because uh, especially with AI and machine learning and, and the social web, right? So you can create these social identities and almost hide behind the masks of these social identities and create several of these identities and engage with the world in, in various ways. So here what I do is I uh, create these reinterpretations of various cultural masks of India from different parts of the country and let the machine create these um, reinterpretations of those masks. Here's another set of those mask outputs. Um, I also want to show quickly a short demo about this piece, which is an interactive version. So, um, what happens with this interactive version is essentially the computer, uh, I stand in front of a computer which has a webcam built in it and it's running on my laptop, so it's, it's a little slow but you'll get the idea of what's going on. So here the machine is in real time uh, changing and augmenting myself uh, into these South Indian face painting ritual inspired faces, right? And uh, this sort of engagement for people 
to engage with with culture in a completely different way is something that that's also exciting for me from what machine learning and AI allows us to do. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation. So as we can see that um, machine learning and AI is playing a significant role in disrupting various industries as we know it, very much including the creative ones. And therefore it becomes really important for all of us as, as human beings right now to engage in this conversation and this discourse about what the impact of such technologies are in our everyday lives. And especially with large tech companies collecting lots and lots of data about ourselves and then influencing our behavior and action in ways that we often do not realize that it's happening. So uh, to think about this and to get people to engage with this conversation, I created this conceptual art piece, interactive conceptual art piece called Authorize, where the idea is uh, it's a handwriting machine where you write with the machine. So a person starts writing something, but then their pen contracts and uh, the machine takes over control of their hand to continue that writing. So the machine is trained on a collection of philosophy books and human handwritings, but here at certain point of the interaction, the role between human and machine flips and the machine becomes the thinking entity of this interaction, whereas the human becomes the mere mechanical robotic arm that's just holding the pen to continue that writing. And it's sort of an extreme version of this loss of agency of humans and transferring that agency to the machines, but it's something that invites the audience to start thinking about uh, what, what is happening today, especially in things you already see by composing text messages and emails and so on, there's, there's various ways in which the machine subtly tries and influences what we are writing, thereby it's not just the objective tasks of like finding a ride or something, but it's also subjective tasks where machines are starting to have an impact and influence in our everyday lives. And uh, it's necessary for us to have these conversations so that it's not just a few people who shape AI in certain ways, but we make sure that it's, it's shaped in a way that, that's about augmenting our creativity rather than it being controlled for us. So um, to end this talk, I'd like to leave you all with this thought of, um, of what good are typewriters if they write themselves or pianos if they play themselves, right? For me, as an artist, as a creator, as a writer, as a thinker, as an explorer, or as a human being, uh, what good does that do to me, right? So, for me, the pursuit of machine learning or AI art is not about replacing human artists or human creativity, but it's, it's about augmenting uh, human creativity so that we are able to open new universes of expression that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. And that's what my journey as a cyborg artist is. Thank you.